50 years ago, we went to the moon. We called it Apollo. What many people don't know is that Apollo had a twin. She was a woman named Artemis, goddess of the moon. We are returning to the moon. As a new generation of explorers. This time to stay. And to prepare to achieve humanity's next giant leap of sending the first human missions to Mars. We believe our course will redefine what is possible. That we will discover life-saving, earth-changing science. And that the challenges ahead will inspire generations. This is our manifest. For all who wondered if we could return, for all who dreamed of pressing beyond. We go for all of America. We go. We go as the Artemis generation. We go. We have a very diverse, very qualified astronaut corps. Um, and it just so happens that Apollo had a twin sister. And Apollo's twin sister was named Artemis. And Artemis happens to be the goddess of the moon. So 50 years after Apollo, we have a new program named after Apollo's twin sister. And in this new program, a sustainable return to the moon for the first time in human history we're gonna have the opportunity to send not just men to the moon, but also women to the moon. We are living out the legacy of Apollo, but the Artemis program is very different, and it's a program whose time has come. We're looking at reusing as much of the architecture as possible. That's why we're building the gateway. It's a reusable command and service module. And what we'd like to have is reusable landers that go back and forth from the gateway to the surface of the moon. So what we're doing is we're going to Mars and the moon is the way to get to Mars. So there's a number of advantages to using the moon to get to Mars. Chief among the advantages is that we can learn how to live and work on another world, a world that's not our own, utilizing the resources of that world. There are opportunities to have almost permanent sunlight on the south pole of the moon, which means that that's power, it's electricity. Also on the south pole of the moon, is where water ice resides in mass volume. Water ice, of course, is life support. It's water to drink, it's air to breathe, but it's also rocket fuel. Hydrogen and oxygen is the same rocket fuel that powered the space shuttles, same rocket fuel that powered the Saturn rockets. It's the same rocket fuel that will power uh, the space launch system, which is gonna be the largest, most powerful rocket ever launched, and it's gonna be the rocket that takes our astronauts back to the moon, in fact, the South Pole of the Moon. So the Moon is the proving ground. It's not just about how to get there, but once you're there, how do you live and work using the resources of another world? And then of course, taking all of that technology and all of that capability to Mars, that's the goal. This is not NASA doing this. This is the United States of America doing this, this program, the Artemis program. And there are companies all across our country that have a part in it. And there is excitement in every one of those companies. And these aren't, uh, you know, these are, there are kids just out of college. These are senior managers. Everybody is excited about this. Everybody is talking about this. So there is kind of this wave of excitement being generated just by saying, we're going back to the moon. It's gonna benefit humanity in almost every way. It'll be the small nuances from improved radars, improved systems that are gonna be used on uh, autonomous cars. Those are the things we need to land on the moon. So I, I say humanity right now is in a transition. Cars are starting to drive themselves. Airplanes are starting to fly themselves. So now I think this Artemis program will take us that next step in proving out these systems. Our long-term desire is to be sustained on the moon, learn how to operate on a, on a different celestial body, and then head on to Mars and do the research there that we want to do. Uh, Apollo, for sure, when you look back at that program, the amount that we spent 
uh, has been returned many, many times over. And so when you're investing in people, which we're doing, and when you're investing in technology, which we're doing, you definitely are building infrastructure in our country, you're solving problems, and the other thing you're doing is you're motivating an entire generation of Americans. I was not alive during the Apollo program. That program motivated my entire life. There are millions of people in our country that are like that. And when you go out and do something big and bold and, uh, and solve new challenges, you're definitely gonna motiv motivate the next generation. So we're gonna establish going back there on a regular basis and then we'll end up setting, setting up um, sort of a platform called Gateway and we would launch to the Gateway and from Gateway land on the surface of the moon. History is replete with a spark of innovation in one area of science sometimes becomes revolutionary, not only in that field of science, but maybe in a completely different field of science. And it takes this spark of creativity. People facing challenges is like, we don't know how to do that, so let's figure it out. And in the process of doing that, we stretch uh, the boundaries of what we know in technology. And by doing that, we create a better life here on Earth. Orion is the vehicle that's going to take and put the next man and the first woman on the moon. It's the vehicle that has to take us out of Earth's atmosphere, safely across the expanse of 250,000 miles to the moon, put us in a lunar orbit at the Gateway Space Station, and then sit there and wait while the astronauts go down to the lunar surface for the first time since 1972. Then the astronauts are going to come back up to the gateway, get on Orion, come back home, re-enter Earth's atmosphere, and Orion's going to be the ones going to be able to get us back safely on the ground. We have to come back from lunar return velocities, Mach 32, and dissipate all that energy. So that shape of the capsule that you see behind us is pretty much the same. We've got a heat shield underneath that uh, allows us to get re-enter the atmosphere. The big thing is when you get inside, it's 30% larger. Orion can carry four crew for 21 days, where Apollo was three crew for 14 days. Now it's also taking a lot of advantage of technology developments, where now we've got glass cockpit. We've got digital displays to control all the systems and are able to give that to us in a digital form, pull up our electronic procedures and emergency function. It also has a lot of better computing power because you know, while it's only 25 times faster than the space station computers, you know, that's PlayStation's flying right now, but shuttle, it's 400 times faster than that. And comparison to Apollo, 4,000 times faster than the Apollo computers because Apollo computers had less computing power than we have in our watches these days. A lot more safety redundancies. Uh, it also has composite materials that we're able to make it lighter. We're also able to use 3D printing to make things that we couldn't make before. So it's really, really uh, going to be you know, the next generation vehicle and make that sustained presence on that South Pole that allow us to do all the things we need to to be able to be ready to go from the moon to Mars shortly thereafter.